In this video, I'm going to walk you through the first step I take on a dashboard project. As a former Big Four management consultant, I've learned that skipping this step will cause much greater friction later on in the project. So save yourself some trouble and watch on. Hi, I'm Nicholas Kelly, and I'm the author of Delivering Data Analytics, the step-by-step -step guide to building dashboards. And the first step I'm gonna show you here is part of a wider process called the Enterprise Dashboard Process. And be sure to grab your own PowerPoint template you can download from the description below. Okay, let's get stuck in. Like many things in life, it can be hard to be successful if you don't have a vision or a plan in mind. And of course, it's no different with dashboards. Before we start a dashboard, we need to have a very clear vision of what it is we're driving towards. And that can be aligned to what behavior do we want to change. We need to start with the end in mind. What are we driving towards? A great way to anchor that is by using the dashboard strategy template. This is the very first template you're going to be using in the dashboard adoption formula. It's also a template that you're going to bring with you on your dashboard journey. And here is what it looks like. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's in PowerPoint. It is by design simple and by design not overly extensive. Why is that? If we make it much longer than this, it can become a barrier to actually being used. We need to make it light enough that it's going to be accessible and not look too onerous to complete. Everything in here is considered vitally important to the success of your dashboard. We are going to jump into examples a little bit later on, but first let me walk through some of the aspects that help you craft and define the vision for your dashboard. Now, of course, your dashboard needs a name and it needs a clearly defined objective. Why does this dashboard exist? So you can imagine someone later on in the process, maybe it's not you, maybe someone else is going to build and develop the dashboard, that they could open this up and look at the objective and have a clear understanding of why does this exist? Just as important as that, if not more important, what is the measurable value that this dashboard is going to deliver? How is it going to be measured at the end? And how are we defining the success of this dashboard? We also need to know who is the business owner. Who is the person responsible on the business side for the success of this dashboard and the data owner equivalent of that person, the person who can stand over the data quality and knows where it all comes from. Who are the direct stakeholders of this dashboard? They may not be the end consumers of the dashboard, but they're people that will feel the impact of it. Don't worry if you don't know what a stakeholder is, we will be defining that later on. There may also be indirect stakeholders, ones that are not readily, readily obvious or readily apparent. Now, of course, a dashboard should have a target or intended number of users, as well as a first guess at the number of personas. We're gonna do a deep dive into personas in module two. So don't worry if you don't know what they are right now. Most dashboards are gonna have a dashboard developer, a BI developer are several, and there may be some analysts involved. Now, of course, there's a target technology that this dashboard is going to be built with. Most of the time, it is somewhat irrelevant unless it is more of a legacy technology. And we're also gonna define our data sources. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we saying what our data sources are? This gets particularly important for what comes below the data assessment. If you think, quite often a complaint you might hear, or indeed you yourself may experience this, that when you're working with people in the business, they often don't understand how challenging it can be working with data. The perception that can, be, can exist is that it's just a very, very easy thing to do. And that is, of course, often not the case. 
The idea here is that you start surfacing some of that complexity by giving a real ballpark assessment of what you think those data sources look like. How do they stack up? Now we're going to start looking at a few other things here that may not be readily apparent. How many tabs do we think we're going to have on the dashboard? Well, we probably don't know that out of the gate. What permissions are going to be needed? Who needs access? And when do they need access? And as we move over to the right, we start to see some of the release and versioning dates that we need to put in, as well as the potential change impact. Now this is already like, what's that doing there? And the areas are people process technology. Here is a first opportunity to start to acknowledge that if this dashboard is truly going to deliver value, how is it going to impact people, process and technology? And finally, if you're going to be using workshops and meetings, of course, you should be using meetings for engaging with people. When are you going to have those? So putting some timing around those. So all in all, we have to use this dashboard strategy template as the very first thing we're going to use when we start our dashboard project, the very, very first activity that we're going to do. Use this template when you decide, okay, there's a new request for dashboards come in, or you're just creating one more proactively. Whatever the case is, this is your first port of call. By starting with the end in mind, we have to define what it is that measures success. How do we know we've been successful if we can't measure it? So that's our very first thing that we need to look at. How do we know we have succeeded? In the dashboard strategy template, we had a space to insert measurable value. I'm going to show you some examples of a successful dashboard of successful pieces of measurable outcomes that you can have. And this is how you need to define your dashboard. I want you to come up with an example for yourself. How would you define a success? Look at these three options here. Now, of course, these may be wildly off what you need, but these are examples of what is a successful measurable outcome from a dashboard. Increase adoption by 50% in one year. That is something we can measure. We can measure adoption of a dashboard, depending on the tool that you have and the platform. But if it's measurable, then you can make it a goal. Of course, we have to have some degree of constraint in that. We can't just leave it open-ended. Increase adoption by 50% over a set period of time. In this case, in one year. Another one, improve customer engagement by 2% by Q4. So this dashboard needs to help drive customer engagement by 2%. And we have to realize that change and impact by Q4. And the final one here, reduce employee attrition by half a percent this financial year. So these are all examples of good measurable value that you're going to have with your dashboard. So your very first activity is to crack open the dashboard strategy template and start to fill out what it is for you that's going to be a successful dashboard. I've got an example here. The name of this dashboard is product sales. The objective is to give a single view of sales performance across all products. How are we going to measure that we're going to be successful with that, this dashboard? Increase average deal size by 7% up to 40, 45,000 per product sale. Now, why is this important? We're doing this up front for a critical reason. If we know what we're driving towards, if we have this common goal and common outcome in mind, we are going to get hyper-focused on making sure we deliver on that versus some vague and ambiguous goal where there's nothing measurable and no one's going to be held to the fire as it were if we don't reach it. 
So we have to spend the time and energy to properly define what is measurable value. And in this example, increase average deal size by 7% up to 45,000 per product sale. It's really, really specific. So this is the first thing you have to do. You need to define this. So you might need to take a little bit of time. You might need to take a five, 10 minutes. Maybe you need to pick up the phone. Maybe you need to have the conversation with someone. But this is going to be a cornerstone, the linchpin of building a successful dashboard. If you liked it, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you'll be updated when I release new videos and practical tips for the enterprise. Now, if you need consulting advice in any of these topics, please feel free to reach out to me through the contact page on our website, deliveringdataanalytics.com. Just navigate to the services and consulting page and you can fill out the form there. On the website, you'd also find a suite of products that we have that help you be more successful with your colleagues and stakeholders, as well as a series of courses that you and your team can take. Thank you and see you next time.